Okay. <laughs> and so I, I think this work to involve a multiple community, and I work to this uh, project for VPP, and I also need to enhance TS. And uh, you know, TS is uh, developed from uh, OpenSSL, and uh, from this uh, scope, I also fix some uh, issues from OpenSSL side, so I need to take this chance to thank all the guys' uh, help in this project. Uh, I will not list the name uh, spec by spec, uh, but uh, I'd like to uh, thank those guys from different companies such as Cisco, uh, Intel, and OpenSSL, and uh, uh, also some universities in Shanghai. And uh, today's agenda, I like to, uh, firstly, I'd like to give a background a view of the uh, TS alteration, uh, what we did before. Uh, because um, before we port in TS and async, uh, enable TS async in the VP side, we already did some work based on Nagix. And I would like, firstly, we'd like to review this uh, effort and to see what's the uh, value and what's the challenges for this. And then we can, we'd like to come to cloud native environment. we just like to see what's the uh, uh, challenges, what should do to, clo uh, to resolve the problem in the cloud native side. And uh, uh, basically, we'd like to propose the solutions for uh, both software side and hardware side. And software side, we will firstly to enable the user space, as, uh, user space and to enable the async mode. And for the hardware side, we'd like to uh, give you introduction how to talk with the hardware side. And uh, uh, finally, we'd like to give you introduction what we have done and how to enable TLS async in the VPP command. Uh, finally, we'd like to give some performance uh, integration we did. And um, I think everybody knows TLS is uh, everywhere. When you open your cloud, um, browser, you will got THTP connection. And this trade is a very good and um, uh, you can see that not only for, uh, for, for PC, whatever, OS, whatever, hardware, and it can provide uh, the, the traffic for TS increase very much. And uh, this is the reason why we need to do the, the, uh, the site. And if you, and since the TS need uh, the computing of the uh, software and the crypto, uh, it means that um, uh, we have to spend some time to handle the crypto traffic. And how to handle the crypto? Uh, mostly we have two ways to go. One is that we can use just the software. And the software is uh, very easy, and uh, uh, OpenSSL can provide such kind of library. But the problem is that software will cost so much CPU uh, cycles. So the another alternative is that we can use hardware to offload some of the traffic for the crypto. And uh, this is the uh, work we should do, is that uh, OpenSSL provides uh, engine framework. So whatever uh, it can be provided by hardware support. And um, uh, we previously enabled QT engine inside the OpenSSL. And uh, this QT engine will talk with, uh, uh, with the hardware by, by the ring. And the ring can be, uh, can be a buffer, such as a queue. The queue will be sent out to the traffic to the hardware. And the hardware can got this request. So this is the way we go, and uh, from the experiment, we definitely see that hardware can um, conceive much cycles for the, uh, for the crypto. Uh, so speaking of the hardware, how can we do that? And um, uh, Intel has uh, uh, hardware to support that, and uh, uh, this time we use uh, Intel Quick Assistant technology. Uh, this is uh, hardware, this hardware can support and offload much of the network traffic, network um, CPU intensity, uh, uh, workload for us, and uh, it can help you to offload symmetric, and it can also help you to offload the asymmetric. Uh, by the way, it can also help you to do compression side. For example, you can do some uh, loss list, loss list compress uh, as well. And uh, for this uh, kind of, since we enable the hardware, uh, we have some, we also need to work together uh, with the software, and how to use a software to talk with the hardware. Normally we have two ways, also two ways to go. One way is that we use uh, a synchronized mode. A synchronized mode is um, a bit slow because it can, uh, CPU has to wait until the hardware has completed the, tra the transaction. And uh, that's, I think is uh, very efficient. It, uh, it, it can also show that from this graph, we can see that normally for, in the best case, 
uh, hardware async mode can improve around seven uh, times performance for the uh, for the throughput. So uh, I will introduce more how we can enable async mode. <coughs> and uh, uh, this is the Netjix uh, TS acceleration architecture we previously did. Uh, in this uh, work has enabled many customers, uh, for example, for the gateway, many customers want to accept a big traffic of the connection, and uh, uh, TIS can, uh, we enable TIS in the Netjix side, and mostly uh, since we want to enable a sync mode, so we want to add a new module in the application side. Uh, for example, take Netjix as example, uh, Netjix will uh, Netflix has a, um, a layer of the OpenSSL event, and we need to add some uh, thing to the event module. The module can know what to talk with the with the hardware. So basically, uh, this model can uh, can boost the performance, but it can also have some uh, cost. Is that we have to change something in the Netflix side? So in the uh, so speak of that, we came to. Uh, after the review of the work we previously did, let's uh, come to the uh, cloud native environment. We know everything is changed, and uh, the deployment is also uh, changed from um, from the monolithic mode to uh, microservice. Everybody is talking about microservice, and um, so face of the cloud native environment, what we should do for the cloud native? This is um, also a question we we are not trying to talk about, and. Uh, since the cloud native environment, uh, previously there's a one per application, and this application is, a, is a huge, is a very big. And uh, inside this application, everything is internal traffic, so it can use the internal uh, memory in, uh, and the shared memory or, or IPC mechanism to talk. And after the, maxo, uh, after the monolithic environment, uh, we came to the microservice, a uh, microservice means that uh, the service in different container or in different physical machine. So it means that we have some, some internal traffic will become the external um, throughput. And this throughput is um, basically, it's also throughput is also need the uh, TS to protect it. So there's new generated traffic in the cloud native environment. And this traffic previously is maybe internal uh, IPC core. Now we come to uh, now this traffic come to the, the network traffic or something is a, a dock to dock internal communication and this communication need TLS to support it. And so we came to the question to face the uh, cloud native environment to how can we address such kind of problem and uh, how to accelerate TLS as well in the cloud native side. So basically we provide a solution for two parts. One is that to software side so the side is that we'd like to, uh, Florian just give us a very good presentation how we can do that in the user space, uh, uh, user space uh, TDPIP stack. So TS can also leverage uh, Florian's TS, uh, Florian's user space, and we can see that how to uh, enhance it to make um, uh, enhanced, uh, so rated TS traffic. And the second is that we, some, uh, I mentioned that for the, uh, uh, for crypto cooperation is very heavy. It um, need the hardware support. So uh, basically, we like to cover these two fields for the hardware side and for the software side. How to accelerate TS for cloud native? Uh, let's see. Uh, this uh, give a brief review for the TS side and um, uh, to the VP and FIDO um, user space is already implemented. So how can we put TS? to the VPP uh, host stack. And uh, the solution is that we are trying to make TLS under the session layer. And um, the TLS is um, just like uh, application for the traditional, original TCP, uh, TCP transport, but it can also connect it to the session layer. So from the, uh, from the perspective of the session, it just uh, take TLS as a transport layer. So just like TCP, whatever, just use the FIFO to communicate with the TC, TLS session. And for TLS itself, it's a, like um, application, a TLS application for the transport layer. So transport layer can just also send out the traffic to, to the TLS. So in this way that we are trying to make um, transparent TLS uh, in, in, the, in the solution. Uh, as I just mentioned, for TLS, uh, for the Netflix side, 
if we want to enable TIS, we want to change something in the application. So application need to talk, have some sense of the hardware, then it can talk with the hardware. But in the TS side here, we are trying to change this. We are trying to restructure the whole stack to make a transparent solution for this, so that if we enable the uh, TIS in the VPP stack, uh, for any application, it is transparent. It just notifies that I'm trying to use TIS session instead of TCP session. So internal infrastructure will help you to do the TIS instead of the TCP. So everything is very transparent and nothing changes needed in the service layer. And uh, uh, so this uh, is a very good uh, solution for us so that we can do whatever application enhancement. And um, uh, to how to talk with VCL. Uh, just um, VCL is also the higher layer and the, for the interface, for the application. And uh, we also do some change uh, in this. Uh, for example, currently you can see a very small patch to act this. Um, normally the session layer includes the TCP, the UDP. Now we think that TLS is one of them. And uh, for the VCL layer, it just uh, treats the TCP, UDP as the same as TC, uh, TLS, except some key and uh, certification change. And um, uh, currently I'm now working on this uh, patch. And um, I hope that when I come back, this patch can be also upstream to uh, VCL library. And uh, then, speak of that, we did change to the for the transparent TIS session. So what can, shall we do for, for the, for the uh, QT side, how to accelerate it in the hardware? And uh, what we do is that we are trying to add the hardware offload mechanism so that for the crypto square, we can leverage the uh, hardware to help us to do the crypto uh, operation. So, uh, so we did this and um, we added the TLS async mode. Uh, you can see that in the plugin of the TLS uh, OpenSSL, uh, I add a, a new module as named as TLS async. So the TLS async module is newly added to help you to do that. And this code is also uh, upstream in 18.7. Uh, uh, and um, uh, the most uh, important thing is that we are trying to uh, use this async mode to make the uh, uh, TLS to talk with the hardware so that hardware can uh, help you to increase the performance and um, uh, to make a transparent and uh, uh, high throughput implementation. Uh, I also added the feature of the async mode and uh, you know uh, we also need to do something change in the open cell side. And uh, basically, uh, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, sync mode is, um, uh, is uh, very simple. Uh, we can see that when you're trying to leverage something to the hardware, you need to talk with OpenSSL. And OpenSSL has an engine, has an engine layer, a framework. And the engine framework can send out this, patch, this request to, to the hardware. And the hardware can help you do that. So normally, the one transaction is like this. But the sync mode means that the CPU have to wait until the request has completed. So you can see that for this uh, sync mode, uh, one, uh, session one comes and then session, uh, session, and session one ends, then we start to session two. So this is a very uh, normal, but the support is very low. And uh, so speak to, to make it efficient, we need to use a sync mode. It means that when session one sends out the traffic to the hardware, and uh, we don't need to, the hardware to come back with the result. We can send out the traffic, uh, so traffic very quickly so that we can send out traffic two without uh, session one can back. So this uh, sync mode can help you to maximize the uh, throughput and uh, the hardware can be fully utilized. And uh, uh, so to resolve this problem, we also need to address some issues for for the OpenSSL side. Uh, currently, OpenSSL is using the five discrete based notification. And the solution is like this. The application um, will try to use the EPO, uh, the, the application and the engine will share the file descriptor. And uh, when the response comes back, comes back, the response call will notify the, uh, the application by a file descriptor. So when some, um, so when the call, so the, the normal publication is like this. 
when the application sends out the traffic to the hardware and it will re return immediately. So when, it can, when we, the next response comes back, we need to rely on the callback inside the, the engine. The engine will call some uh, callbacks and the callbacks will write something to, write some event FD to the file descriptor, and the file descriptor will be monitored by the application side, and then it can uh, know that the response is, uh, is coming, and that we, can, uh, we can continue the post uh, uh, connection. So this way is, um, uh, is working now, but there's some problem is that it involves some of the traffic and the, the context switch between the kernel space and the user space, it will cost so much cycles. And another thing is that um, we need like to expose the file descriptor. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, we need like to expose the file descriptors, and um, uh, so 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 this will make us some difficult in the VP side. And so the solution is like this: we are using the kernel bypass notification. And uh, we will uh, try, instead of the kernel space file descriptor, we will use a user space uh, async handler. And this async handler will shared by VPP and uh, the QoT engine. And uh, when uh, this uh, handler will be uh, shared, so when the response comes back and uh, the uh, QoT engine will call the async handler, and the, hand the async handler will do something, especially it will move the incomplete session to the complete the running session, and then, then this running session can be continued again. And uh, uh, this is uh, maybe time is limited, and uh, so uh, this is the way how can we enable the TSA sync in a VPP. We provide some command line, and uh, especially uh, you can also use sync if you want. But uh, if you want to enable a sync, you can add an um, extra command to make it happen. And uh, this is the uh, final uh, performance test based on the sync and uh, the sync mod. And uh, we can see that we, uh, for one core, uh, we have uh, six times performance increment compared with the hardware and the, the software side. And uh, uh, the final uh, key takeaway is that um, um, we are leverage uh, QT technology to help you to offload your traffic uh, your crypto in the crypt cloud native environment. And then we also implement a transparent uh, design and enabling for the TIS. And we also finally we enable a sync mode for the framework. Thanks all.